Let's go down here.
welcome to this very special occasion, a combined reunion of the Op High School Voices alumni and the Dorothy Rainer Seller School of Dance alumni. And what a touching way to start out the evening with that beautiful rendition of America the Beautiful, sung as only the OHA Voices could perform. I'm Trippy McGuire, and I'll be emceeing the Dorothy Rainer Seller segment of tonight's performance. The Op High School Voices and the Dorothy Rainer Seller School of Dance were two op institutions that brought joy and entertainment to residents of op in the surrounding area for several decades. Dorothy School was often referred to as DRS, using her <coughs> initials. So if you hear me say DRS, that's what I'm referring to. A lot of work and many practices have taken place in preparations for tonight's event. The DRS dancers have been practicing for this moment since 2019. COVID postponed their plans until this year. It'll be interesting to see if their stamina will let them perform through an entire song tonight. <laughs> Just a little joke. Very, very, very little. <laughs> and, and to offset a rumor, no, it is not true that paramedics are off stage to assist if one of them has a awesome. They're not off stage, they're in the parking lot. <laughs> Dorothy Rainer Sellers' reign as a dance instructor spanned 72 years from the time she was 15 years old. This is what she had to say about her beginning in her own words. Her name was Julia Norman and she came to Ott two days a week to teach dance. I was 10 years old and I decided then I wanted to be a dance teacher like Ms. Norman. I went to every class she taught and learned everybody's dances. So if she ever had to miss class, she would ask me to lead the classes in practice. Later, when I was 15 and Ms. Norman could not travel anymore, some mothers asked me to teach the children whatever I could. A room was provided in the Op Elementary School building. My dad installed ballot bars, my mother agreed to do the little bit of bookkeeping necessary, and my friend, Annie Ellis, agreed to accompany the classes on piano. At the end of that first year, we did a recital. The year was 1941. Close quote. Over the course of her seven-decade dance instructor career, Dorothy shared her passion for poise, dance, and the arts with three different generations. At the end of her career, she was actually teaching the grandchildren of her original students. Dorothy was a living legend. Hundreds of students came from miles around to take dance from Dorothy. From Andalusia, Elba, Florella, Kinston, Brandon, Enterprise, even Crestview and the Funiac Springs, along with other towns, week in and week out, they were coming to Op during the school year, nine months out of each year, plus an extra week when school let out to practice for the dance recitals. Now those dance recitals played to packed audiences for two nights each year. Hundreds would fill this auditorium to enjoy those performances, which became an Op institution. Dorothy was a perfectionist and a disciplinarian. She had high expectations for her students and demanded nothing less than their best. She was a tiny dynamo of energy. Her passion for dance created unofficial traditions that took place each year, such as moms taking turns carpooling children to dance class each week, dozens of sleeping bags all over this auditorium, auditorium floor during recital week so younger students could take naps during practices which went late into the night sleep-deprived children and parents who were up late every night during recital week waiting for practices to end. These were sacrifices and inconveniences that both children and parents were willing to suffer through without question in order to be a part of Ms. Seller's magnificent performances. Her passion resulted in the spreading of beauty, beauty in the excited eyes of her students as they were about to perform on stage, the beauty of the smiles of parents and grandparents watching their child perform. The beauty and grace the students displayed in their dancing. The emotion and pride all of us parents felt as we watched our children on stage a year older each year growing up right before our eyes. This was the impact that Dorothy Sellers had on hundreds of students and parents over the course of seven decades and three different generations. Dorothy was also famous for drafting people in the community into on-stage roles in her recital. She once drafted a dozen moms into being bathing duties on stage, wearing 1890-style specially made swimsuits, complete with bathing caps, swimming stockings, and tap shoes. 
Even got them to perform a dance. My wife is here as one of them tonight, and she'll stand up and perform. I'm kidding. <laughs> one time she drafted the bank president, the bank vice president, and the postmaster as extras on stage to serve as backdrops for several scenes. And sometimes over a dozen op citizens would be on stage as backdrops. For 20 plus years, Ms. Sellers had the Covington County District Attorney and the district judge performing on stage in slapstick comedy routines in which the district attorney, Jeannie Loggins, was always typecast as a little old lady and the district judge, yours truly, got to perform different roles. <laughs> Ours was the only act in the entire history of Alabama where the district attorney got to beat up the district judge each year <laughs> as part of an on-stage slapstick act in front of a live audience. Dorothy, Jeannie, and myself had an understanding between us that for four nights during the first week of June each year, Jeannie and I belonged to Miss Sellers. Now, that was two nights of practice and two nights of, uh, for the recital each year for 20 plus years. That came to a total of 80 nights, almost three months, that Jeannie and I gave to Dorothy over the course of 20 plus years. That is how much Jeannie Loggins and I believed in Mrs. Sellers and what she was trying to instill in our young people. What were some of those things she was instilling? Grace, poise, confidence, discipline, and manners. Oh yes, manners. Here are some sellerisms, Miss Sellerism. Do not chew gum. Look unhappy. Wear ragged tights. Look at your watch. Cross your arms in front of your body. Or let your shoes come untied. Katie White, did you hear that next day? <laughs> when you chew gum, you look like a blue cow. Remember to say please and thank you, yes ma'am, and yes sir, and many other things. Dorothy Sellers had a list of accomplishments a mile long, and those accomplishments are all but forgotten. What are not forgotten are the lessons, the discipline, and the work, work ethic she forever etched into the minds of her students, well over a thousand of them over the course of her 72 years of dance instruction. Those traits live on today in her students, and as we are about to see, the dance routines that she taught still live on today, tonight, for your viewing pleasure. I'll be speaking for 15 to 30 seconds in between numbers, not because I want to hear myself talk, uh, but to give the dancers a chance to catch their breath. <laughs> a little bit older than the old song, uh, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. <laughs> Take that teen away. Now, Please join me in welcoming back to the stage the DRS alumni dancers.
y'all are off to a good start. That was a warm up dance. You know, it takes old joints a while to get the blood flowing. And hopefully that did it. The pre ballet division was the five and six year old class, and it was Dorothy's youngest. They were also her cutest class. Not that these aren't cute, but they were cuter. <laughs> these little girls were on stage for the first time in front of all these people, and they were oftentimes more focused on finding their older siblings and relatives out in the audience than they were concentrating on their dance moves. Sometimes they interrupted their dancing to wave to somebody out in the audience. Most students were in the pre-ballet division for two years, and next they moved up to the elementary division. This is where they learned tap, which our dancers will now perform. I think during the first part of that song, some of those dancers were having flashbacks. <laughs> and what Katie White was doing, I remember her doing that the first time on stage. Same thing. As I stated in the beginning, Miss Sellers taught three generations of students. It was common for all the siblings in one family to be taking lessons from her at the same time, although in separate classes. Occasionally in recitals, the moms would perform also, especially if they were former students. Here now to perform the front back step dance are our parent and child dancers.
An early student who took dance from Miss Sellers back in the late 50s and early 60s was Diane Thomas McCurley. Now, Diane was the second generation of four generations in her family who took lessons from Miss Sellers. Her uncle, Bill Thomas, was the first generation. He took lessons from Dorothy when Dorothy was just 16 years old. Diane was the second generation to take. Her children, Chance and Dixie, were the third generation to take. And her granddaughters, Beth and Hannah, were the fourth generation from this same family to take lessons from Miss Sellers. That is, to this day, a Guinness World Record. <laughs> With the exception of first generation Bill, they are all here tonight. Please join me in welcoming the McCurley family. was excellent, McCurley's so fun. As I stated previously, on numerous occasions, multiple siblings from the same family took lessons from Miss Sellers. This is where carpooling came in, so that moms and sometimes dads wouldn't have to keep going back and forth to Miss Sellers' dance studio to drop off and pick up their kids. A lot of Ops children got to experience those carpooling days. Here to perform for us now are some of those siblings who took dance back in the day.
Yeah, she's up here. She'll be with you shortly. As Ms. Sellers observed her classes practice for recitals, she would modify to adapt to her class, I was told. I'm not sure what that means, but in football terminology, I think it means you play to your strengths and disguise your weaknesses. On offense, you take whatever the defense will give you, and if need be, you make last-second adjustments at the scrimmage line by checking off. Hopefully, we won't have to do that tonight. Everything will go as planned. Here performing Hello, Dolly, are the DRS dancers. straight from one number to the next with no interruptions. Today, those old days seem like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Now, our oxygen-deprived dancers will perform a regular favorite, Top Hat.
and uh, they're breathing pretty hard right now. Uh, I don't want anybody to worry about them, though, because in order to qualify to be on stage uh, last Thursday week ago, they had to run the two miles in 12 minutes. So, no, not, not really. Not really. I, I don't think any of us would have qualified. But those last two dances, Hello Dolly and Top Hat, along with the dances that are following, were part of what's called repertoire dances, uh, standard dances which were very hard and were performed regularly. If you didn't learn these, you weren't promoted as the dances got even harder. You could not learn the advanced dances if you did not learn the repertoire dances. We continue with our repertoire dances with the favorite, Fascinating Rhythm. They took in the sights, visited Broadway, and would take in a show or two. Her 2002 dance recital theme was, We Love New York, to honor the brave residents of New York City who had suffered the horrific attack of 9-11, which killed 2,753 New Yorkers and destroyed the Twin Towers. Here to perform, no strings, are some of our dancers.
talk really slow. <laughs> that reminds me of a joke. A shy young teenage boy uh, asked out a real pretty girl one time on a date. And at, at the end of the date, he walked her to the door, and the young lady closes her eyes and puckers her lips up to be kissed. And the young boy, very shyly, stands on his tiptoes and kisses her on the forehead. And he says, I had a good time, and kissed her. And she said, lower, please. I had a good time. <laughs> I ended up marrying that girl. <laughs> she didn't kiss me until we got engaged. <laughs> Alright, we are now in the fourth quarter. You know, the horse always trots faster once it sees the bar. And these girls are not horses, but I think they'll pick up their tempo now that they see there's white at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I've watched our dancers practice on several occasions in the last week, and I've been amazed with the way their dance moves came back to them. Now keep in mind, however, that most of them took 12 or 13 years of dance for Miss Sellers. That was kindergarten through 12th grade. And no other te teacher or coach had them for that long. And no other teacher or coach had as much influence over them. Miss Sellers was their longest running instructor. Now, I recall when some of these ladies appeared on stage for their first dance as members of the pre-ballet or elementary groups. And it was my pleasure to watch them perform on stage each year. Each year they were a little taller, a little more confident as they grew from little girls into young ladies. They always made us proud and they still do tonight. Next is everybody has the right to be wrong.
Thank you.
this seller's recitals, recognitions would be given to the graduating seniors who would be recognized individually. Tonight's dancers have long since graduated, but recognition is due to Kim Ashbury Hollinghead and Stephanie Tisdall Rogers for having the vision to bring about this event. Recognition also goes to those of this group who have gotten together for the Sunday afternoon practices every Sunday afternoon since 2019 to bring this all about. And those ladies, besides Kim and Stephanie, would include Carrie, ba Carrie Bracky Buckaloo, Tiffany Griffin Goldhagen, Mary Catherine Head, Kelly Pierce, Robin Pierce, Joelle McKinney Sage, Anna Head Spence, and Jackie Williams. Ladies, you've done an outstanding job. Now we come to the finale performed to the song Chinatown. Chinatown was always the last song performed in the recitals. It became a tradition for the graduating seniors to perform this kick line routine to close out their 12 year career with the Dorothy Rainer Sellers School of Dance. It was a proud moment, but it was also an emotional moment for the seniors as the realization hit them that something special that had been a weekly part of their lives ever since their kindergarten days, would suddenly be coming to an end. The last DRS class was in 2000, the last DRS recital was in 2010. Her last class was in 2011, although Ms. Sellers was not physically able to work with that class the entire year. Others taught for her to finish out that year. So neither the senior class of 2011 nor the classes under them ever got to dance to Chinatown on the front line as the seniors before them had done for decades. Tonight, though, we have one of those students who finally gets to perform Chinatown on the front line. Would Haley Hall Elmore please step forward? <laughs> I, I guess I should say, would Haley Hall Elmore and her unborn baby please step forward? <laughs> The two of them will be performing on the front line. After this number, we'll have an intermission followed by the Op High School Voices alumni. Thank you for joining us here now to perform our last dance to Chinatown is our entire DRS class.
Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy it. How are you? Tree of Peace. Good job. Hey, Dad. How are you? of Joe Reese Tisdale, Mr. Wonderful. I'm sure all of us have a Joe Reese story and a Joe Reese memory and a smile. We all remember and love Mr. Wonderful. He was their director until his retirement in 1985. At that time, Faye Tisdale, who all the kids referred to either to her face or behind her back as Miss Tiz, assumed the director's position and served in that capacity until 2010. Directors since 2010 have been Ms. Olivia Ennis, Mr. Chris Whitey, and Mr. Dylan Worley. Those directors, along with the Tinnisdales, span 54 years of Voices Music. Let's get ready for a treat as we enjoy the fruits of their labor. The first selection that they'll be singing is, I'd like to teach the world to sing. And this was chosen because it demonstrates what choral music at its finest is all about. The voices will begin in unison, then they'll go to two-part harmony, then three-part harmony, and finally four-part harmony, which is the ultimate goal of every mixed choir. Then we're going to listen to them sing heart and soul. Now, for you non-piano players, Heart and Soul was that one song where one person did the thumping on the bottom and the other person did the thumping on the top, and that was our claim to fame. It was the only song we could play on the piano. But did you know there are words to it? It's not only fun to play, it's fun to sing. Remember the hit song, I Write the Songs, from the 1970s? I remember the 70s. Some of you do, too. This was a favorite back then by none other than Barry Manilow. Following I Write the Songs, I know it's not December, but the next medley of songs were sung by the Op High School voices frequently over the years, became some of their favorites, so we experienced Christmas in July with this Christmas medley. And now is where I'm going to talk about the voices from a teacher's perspective. They always missed class during December. And they always managed to plan these performances around lunchtime. Always. I heard a lot of talk about the Methodist cooks, the Baptist cooks. Everywhere they went, they got fed. They came back amazingly right after lunch. And they didn't have to eat lunchroom food, even though we had something pretty good that day. But they always loved going and eating. And I, we always heard an update on the food every time they went. I believe they're all in place now, so let's enjoy the Op High School Voices alumni as they present the reunion concert for 2022. Thank you.
I don't know if it was mentioned prior, but I feel like I should mention it. There are some donation baskets in the lobby to help defray the cost of putting on this concert and also to support scholarships in the name of Joe and Faye Tisdall and Dorothy Rayner Sellers. All the money I promise will be used for a good cause and if you see it in your heart to donate something, I'm sure it will be appreciated. The closing section will begin with Lift Up Your Eyes. This was performed so much that the student body and even some of the faculty could perform the choreography along with the voices. The choreography was taught many years ago by Oxo and Jan Gunnels. Following Lift Up Your Eyes, we're going to enjoy a country standard, Take Me Home Country Roads. Then a favorite from the 60s, I remember the 60s, Simon and Garfunkel's Sound of Silence, followed by a tribute to Karen Carpenter. The final song of the night, very fittingly, is The Majesty and Glory of His Name, directed by one of our own voices, Tim Pierce. Ladies and gentlemen, the OHS voices. Shut the chain. 
Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is over there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, flowing like a breeze.
just a minute. Dorothy Sellers, you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Sellers passed from this life several years ago, but her alumni students wanted to get a plaque in memory of her. So we have this plaque that will be hung in an appropriate place. And at the top of the plaque, it has a drawing she made of herself. It says, Dorothy Rainer Sellers, 1949 to 2011. It says, Dorothy Rainer Sellers' life's work was to bring culture to her community through the arts and to instill an appreciation of the arts in each student whose life she touched. Her love of dance, her passion for teaching, her uncommon talent, and above all, her dedication to artistic integrity are unmatched. This will be hung in an appropriate place. And now, Faye, if you and your sons, if Brandon is out in the audience, I'd ask him to come forward up on stage, please. And just stand by my side. Just... I told him he was going to have to come on stage. <laughs> He did put on his makeup, I saw that. Is he coming? Brandon Tizzle, come on now. without Joe and Faye Tizzle. They were truly the dynamic duo around whom the Op Choral Department revolved. As a newcomer to Op in 1979, I was blown away by the voices and by the musicals. Uh, I had gone to a high school that's now a 7A high school, and we had nothing like that in my high school. Joe and Faye worked day after day, even night after night, honing their students into sharp, confident performers. They put off on the proverbial map for outstanding musical performances. They made music fun, and they made music contagious. It was their passion and their calling, and we were its beneficiaries. Well done, good and faithful servants. Faye, on behalf of your grateful students, backed by the love and appreciation of the citizens of Ott, I want to present this plaque to you, but let me read it to you first. It says, Joe R. and Faye Tisdall, 1967 to 2007. The gift of song is a gift of love. The lyrics of this song exemplify Joe R. and Faye Tisdall over a 40-year period of time from 1967 to 2007. Mr. and Ms. Tisdall taught the gift of song to students and to the city of Iowa. As we receive, so let us give and live with joy our whole life through. The gift of song is a gift of love. Now let us sing our song for you. Faith, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating, for the time. It's great to see all of you hang around and visit. And for our audience, thank you so much for your attention, attendance tonight. Uh, don't forget the gift baskets in the back if you'd like to donate to help finance what we did and finance future scholarships. Thank you so much. Be safe and God bless you.